Let's face it, presenting creative work can feel pretty vulnerable at the best of times. And now we're all doing it from our sitting rooms, our bedrooms, our home offices, and that can make people feel less confident, less centered, less bold when they have to pitch or present. In this short series of films for Lions Live, I want to help you make this 2D medium feel much more 3D. I want to help you go from panic to power the next time you have a big presentation or a big pitch. So who am I? I'm Caroline Goida. For many years I worked with actors at Central School of Speech and Drama in London. I'm the author of three books, Gravitas, Find Your Voice and Star Qualities, and my TEDx on Speaking with Confidence has been watched eight and a half million times. So we're going to focus on some really straightforward tips, skills, hacks to help you ace those pitches, those presentations. Let's go. Tip one, let's set your stage and your focus on virtual. Do you remember the old world? In some ways it was kind of simple. You would travel to a meeting, you would go up in the lift, you would sit with the client, you would chat to them for a bit over coffee, and then you would get to the real stuff of the meeting. In a world where all of that is gone, how do we get ourselves set up so that we can be really focused and ready and on our A game? Setting our stage, even when we're presenting from our bedrooms, is really, really important. And there's such a simple thing that you can do to make yourself feel ready and centered. It's to stand up. Now, of course, not all meetings are created equal. A relaxed chat with the creative team, you don't need to stand up for. What I'm talking about is the big pitch to the ECDs or to the client, that moment where you've really got to own it and be bold. Simple, simple trick that will really help you ace it is get a laptop stand or an ironing board with a couple of books on it so that you can prop your laptop up and stand and gesture. You will feel so much more grounded and you will feel so much more confident. It helps your alignment, it allows your breath to flow freely, it helps your voice to be centered and it allows you to gesture in a relaxed, authentic way. And all of that is going to make you feel so much more you in the moments where someone may be trying to knock you off center or criticize your work. So I promise you, if you really want to set your stage, really want to find your focus, stand up for the big meetings. It's a proper game changer. Tip two, so simple, so effective, will really help you center yourself before big meetings. Take control of how you show up. So creative work is vulnerable, and I know that if I'm gonna be presenting my writing in a meeting, I need to really be on my A game, I need to be centered, I need to be calm, because otherwise I'm gonna react. If it's a bad day, I know that I won't deal with what comes. And I, I describe this as being a bit like a weeble that wobbles but doesn't fall down. We all need, when presenting creative work, to be the weeble. We've got to be knocked off center and come back to calm really quickly. Now the problem for most of us in virtual land is that our meetings run back to back. You might have six in a row and you don't have time to have a coffee, go outside. And that's risky when you've got a big meeting where someone's gonna be coming and critting your work. So what I really want you to make sure that you do is take half an hour, 15 minutes before the big ones, where you calm yourself down. I want you to switch off devices because devices are shown to make us hold our breath and that kicks in fight or flight. So just like an actor, just before they go on stage, give yourself a half where you sit quietly, where you get present to what you're being asked to do and where you make sure that if anything comes your way that is critical or negative, you handle it, you step up to it, you don't let it knock you over. I promise you this will help you ace those meetings. Tip three. I actually think that this is the big one when it comes to really acing your virtual meetings. 
Because we all get a little bit locked in when we're on laptops and phones all day. We get a bit locked into our own worldview. The people who really speak through, not at, screens, the people who make the 2D feel 3D, do you know what they're doing? It's empathy. And the thing that you can do before a meeting, and even during a meeting, is to take time to, even as that person criticizes your work, even as the vulnerability hits, take a moment to step into their shoes and think about what are their hopes, what are their fears, what are their responsibilities. And I actually learned this from the actor Bill Nye, who said that when he used to get nervous in auditions, he would always think, how can I help? Because he said it takes you out of a feeling of ah, neurosis and into a feeling of being in service, having compassion for others. And of course, when we have compassion for others, that's when we really shine. That's when we really own it. So before the meeting, during the meeting, listen with empathy, really step into their shoes. And the other thing that helps, a really great question, is before you go into the meeting, before you log on, ask yourself, what do we want them to say about us when they log off this call? What's the one thing they're gonna to say to each other about this meeting? Because that can be the question that unlocks this powerful empathy. And remember that empathy unlocks engagement. Tip four. Commit, be bold. What do I mean by this? Really, I'm talking about your voice and your energy. So, acing a meeting, to my mind, is a bit like driving in city traffic. You know, if you want to get out onto a busy road, you've got to be bold, you've got to be committed, otherwise nobody's going to let you in. Virtual meetings can be really hard to find your edge in, to know when to speak up. But the big trick is to make sure that your voice and your energy are really bold and committed. First thing to think about is know why you're in the room. Know what your intention is and know what you want to change by being there. Then listen carefully. Then, when you speak, commit. What I mean by that is don't be tentative. Don't sit off your voice. Make sure that your voice and your energy are like you are chatting to your best friends, really confident. There's a simple screen actors tip for that, which is even as you look at your camera on your screen, make sure that your voice travels to the wall behind you, because that just gives you a bit more energy. And screen work needs about 20% more vocal energy than we would have sitting one-to-one -one with someone. It's not shouting, it's just engaging. It's being excited, involved, engaged, and that allows them to feel the same thing because they feel what you do. And the next thing is use gesture because when we use our hands, that engages our whole bodies. Engaging our whole bodies builds trust and it also orchestrates your vocal intonation. So gently project your voice to the back wall and in a really natural, relaxed way, use your hands. It's gonna allow you to commit, to be bold, and to really get a word in when you need to. Tip five. This one's simple and it's powerful and it will make you stand out. The best speakers, especially on video conference, are always the best listeners first. We know that this online world is so distracted. You can be doing your online shopping as you listen to someone talk in a meeting. But if you are really listening and really focused, you will massively up your presence. So how do you do that? First thing to do is all the tips up to this point, tips one to four will allow you to show up really focused, present and committed. When you get into the meeting, you've got to really handle your nerves because it's easy just to start speaking because we're nervous. It's much better to start with an introduction and then a powerful question. Find out what success will look like for them in the meeting and start there. Then get to your content. As they talk, listen to what they're valuing, what they're believing. Try and 
play that language back to them because when we feel heard, it builds connection, it builds rapport. Learn to be comfortable with a pause. When a pause hits, don't hold your breath, don't speak into it, breathe into it. Feel the breath drop down into your back as you listen and let that pause start to be comfortable. Let someone else speak into it. And that will give you an ease and a presence that really allows you to show up well. And the final thing that's gonna help you listen is don't rush as a speaker. Borrow from Winston Churchill's principle and speak in sentences of about eight words, like a great script, like a great piece of copy. Don't make your sentences really long. Don't fill them with lots of ands and ifs and buts and fillers. Cut the linking words, make them short and punchy. And when you get to a full stop, close your mouth and breathe. And what you'll notice is that you start to be sharp and punchy and present. People will know you're a good listener and they will also see you and hear you and feel you as a good speaker. Enjoy it, it's a game changer. Five top tips to make the 2D of video conference feel just that little bit more 3D, to make you feel a bit less panicky and a lot more powerful. What are these five tips? Let's go back, let's remember them. Firstly, set your stage. Above all, if it's a big one, if it's a meeting that matters, just stand up, it's gonna help everything. Second one, take control of your state. Make sure that you clear your diary for 15 minutes, even half an hour before that big meeting. So you can be open and responsive, not reactive. So you can be calm and centered, the weeble that wobbles, but doesn't fall down. Tip three is even though we're locked away in our houses, step into their shoes. Empathy builds engagement, it builds connection. Think about their hopes, their fears, their values. Think about what you want them to say about you after the meeting. Tip four is commit, be bold, drive in city traffic. And that means use your gesture, use your voice, send it to the window or the wall beyond your screen. Really own that room, own that Zoom. Tip five, the real big one for screen actors and presence is that good listeners become good speakers. Good speakers are always, always, always good listeners first. So when you kick off the meeting, don't talk at them, ask great questions. When they speak, take it in so you can play their language back to them. And when you pause, relax, breathe, center, don't feel silences. Those things, those five tips will really help you change the game of your meetings. And I promise you, when you stand out as the person who is centered and committed and listening in meetings, people will say of you that you have great meetings, that you are someone they want to work with. And that's not just a game changer for meetings, that's a game changer for your life. Test them, enjoy them, and if you want to make contact, I'm at carolinegoida.com. You can find all my books across global territories, find your voice, gravitas and star qualities, and look out my TEDx. It's a fun one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>